This is the Armour Gorgon. It's 212 US dollars in Australia, or 169 dollars in America. Different markets pay different amounts, I guess, and we're pretty well off in Australia, broadly speaking, so I suppose they know we're going to pay more. In any case, it's actually not a lot of money for what is really a fairly decent and complete basic brushed monster truck. Two-wheel drive, pretty awesome. Now, it's been out for about three weeks in the USA, and while that's been a while for a lot of you guys watching, for Australia, that is like a lightning strike. To have this thing in Australia in just less than three weeks since it was released, good job, Armour. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Now, pay attention. Element, I would love to see some of your trucks here a bit quicker. We still haven't got the U-Tron in Australia yet. This is a slightly different machine. Chances are, if you're watching my channel, you already are aware of this thing, so I'm not gonna go point by point with you, but I will tell you some stuff. It's a Horizon Hobby machine, so of course, you're gonna get a Spectrum radio. This is the SLT2, four double A's on the bottom, two channel, easy to use with two hands, throttle adjustment, 50, 75, and 100, servo reverse, and then steering dual rate for how far the wheels max out, and also your trim. And it's as easy as that. Don't touch it when you first turn it on, and then it, that'll work out where the neutral is. Enough said, comfy radio, I like it. It comes with four AA batteries for it, and if you get the smart pack and not the no battery uh, kit, you also get this little tiny USB-C charger. This is the 5120 smart charger. It takes the IC3 adapter, but it also takes the older EC3 and balance cable. And believe it or not, I mean, I was surprised when I was looking at the back of it, it charges LiPo, lithium iron, lithium high voltage, LAFE batteries, and nickel metal hydride. Two and three S, and also six and seven cell uh, nickel metal hydride. That's a smart little machine, and it does a low speed and high speed charger. <laughs> Doesn't do storage. And if you use this for lipos, just be aware, you want to keep your lipos at about half charge when you're going to put them away, when you're done using them. So keep that in mind if this is the only charger you've got. At the very least, after your last full charge, just run it for about half the time you usually would, and that'll at least keep the stress off your batteries. That's that. The only thing really to let you know about the manual is that it tells you how to use the little all-in-one ESC and receiver as a standalone ESC. You can use your own radio system and still use this ESC. I can't think of many times when you'd need that, but it's nice to know. It has an exploded parts diagram in here as well, which is really nice. It tells you how to adjust the slipper, which is also great. It gives you some extra suspension adjustment. And this is not a little space age double space pistol, although it looks like it. You can actually adjust your slipper with this thing here, and it also does uh, other smaller nuts. It's really cool. So I haven't got any tools like this, and my other favorite uh, hex wrench, a uh, box wrench, is also from Armour. So, love the tools. Okay, in fact, here, look. That's your slipper adjustment there. So that's pretty great. But if you remember back to the HPI Jump Shot V2 with the twin vertical plates, same as the Savage, that was different in a way that this kind of is different too. Generous battery compartment in the bottom and that fits large bricks. I've got a five amp 2S brick that fits just fine with room to spare in there. You'll probably get up to about a six and a half amp 2S brick. Doesn't take 3S in with the stock setup, just so you know. Brush motor is in the back. Body pops off with these single pins. And it's not just the uh, body. And now this isn't Lexan either. This is some kind of other polymer. I, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't feel like Lexan to me. It feels tough. It's certainly flexible. I guess we'll see if it cracks or if it needs reinforcing or not, but it's got plastic inside that sits inside the body post here. Zero adjustability. The body does sit quite high when it's on, but eh, I mean, it's quite attractive. And I wondered when I first heard about Gorgon, because that's uh, Medusa and friends. You couldn't look them in the eyes and they were actually, they were cursed in Greek mythology. And I saw that they've really gone all in on it. The license plate says Medusa, or for people who don't know anything about mythology, they might see Med USA and think, what does that mean? Dare to stare on the top, again. They've gone with the idea of Gorgons and there's a picture of Medusa on the, well, the snakes. It doesn't actually have the poor woman herself because she was actually banished in Greek mythology. Uh, there's a great book by Stephen Fry called Mythos. Highly recommend reading that if you're into reading, or um, Audible has it too. Check that out. 
But anyway, yeah, the Gorgon. So I did wonder about the name and they've gone all in on the whole snake theme. And if you look at it in the eyes, at any of them in the eyes or her in the eyes, you turn to stone. This is an interesting chassis because it actually splits apart laterally. It's held together with not many bolts, actually. Once you pull the uh, front and rear towers off, which also give it uh, force, there are just two screws at the front, two at the rear, and the whole thing splits in half. ESC sits on top, battery compartments in here, which is why it's got so much room, and then your, um, your radio and ESC is there, and then your motor is in the, in the back. Slipper is adjusted on this side, and it really is as simple as that. There's a diff in the middle. It says uh, they've got nice big wide gears in there. I mean, I'm inclined to believe it. I dropped it on the ground a few times from not very far and it bottomed out really easily. So I've actually stuck a, just one of the extra included collars, the fatter one in the rear. That seemed to pick it up all right. And that's really it. There's a big servo saver in the front as well. There's pretty good steering range and it, this uses the older style, which is what some of the Tamiya buggies and Kayasho buggies had. See that last bit of throw? How much there is on the end of the throw? It actually helps it corner in nicely. It doesn't work very well at high speed, that kind of cornering. It tends to produce understeer, but at low speed, that extra little tuck in really helps it come around. And you've got the clearance. So there you go. That's it in a nutshell. It weighs 2.3 kilograms, which is pounds. I'm just going to run with the nickel metal hydride today. It's a seven, in fact, I'll get it. Hang on. This is the little USB-C charger. It has a balanced plug for a two and three S. It says it takes uh, up to two amp input. And although I'm running on something that should output that, it's only drawing 0.9 amps. So it's been charging the included seven cell 3300 milliamp hour battery at the slow pace, which you can tell because it's a white light. It says the high speed charging is a blue light. And because it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, that means it's between 75 and 99% full. So you get one for the first quarter, two for up to half, three for three quarters, and then a solid green when it hits 100%. For reference, here's a five amp 2S battery. And that should speak to the depth of the thing. So you'll be able to fit six or even seven or bigger, possibly 2S LiPos. That's a hard case as well. Uh, it's a generously sized battery slot. Now, I said it had those connectors. You can buy these little extra pieces for not much money. And so you can make other battery types like the XT60 fit just fine with the old EC5 connector, which connects to the new EC3, which connects to the new one just fine. So you can make your own adapters, just so you know if you haven't thought of it before. You don't need to pull the body off to stick the battery in. Although if you're gonna run LiPo, you wanna pull it off to just make sure that the little jumper is set to LiPo. The only difference this serves is for a low voltage cutoff. It doesn't change how the car drives or anything like that. So here's how you put the batteries in. I'm gonna stick the body on first. It's an interesting clip. There's a hole there where the plastic lines up with the body posts that are in. It's actually quite hard to do on camera. Sorry, there we go. So the front's in. You can do it from either side, it seems. Here's the rear. Right. There we go. So the body is not coming off. Here's how the battery goes in. Press these two tabs and the thing comes out. We'll plug the thing in first because that'll be easiest. And we'll put the hump towards the car because I want the flat part of the battery down lower. That'll help with weight distribution. There we go. It wiggles around a little bit, but it's actually pretty secure. So there we go. Power up the radio, lights on. You don't need to take the body off to flick the switch because there is so much room under here, you just reach under and flick it. Done. Let's drive. All right, straight line first. Oh, look at that, track's really straight, that's nice. And stable. Now there's no adjustable camber, no adjustable toe. <laughs> that is very sure footed. Wow. It, it just goes where I want it to. We've got a seven hump LiPo, uh, sorry, nickel metal hard drive, which is like having a 2S LiPo. Not quite the same discharge, but with this 550 brush motor, you're not really gonna miss it. We'll just put it over some small jumps first and see what it's like in the air. Ooh, very composed. Ooh. 
Now I said it turns quickly at low speed, look at that. That's with that, uh, that interesting steering, that last little bit of throw. Turns on a dime, eh? Go a bit bigger. Nice. Now we're not going to have the same air authority as with a four wheel drive. We can correct by bringing the nose up by accelerating. And also harder to correct. I didn't mention this before, but there are holes in the tires, they're vented. No foam in there, so they're puffy, rough and tumble, but boy do they go. And it's nice to see sealed bearings in the, in the front for steering as well. Sealed bearings all around, even better. Now a rock's already gotten in and started to grind away at one of the axles, one of the shafts here. But this thing doesn't weigh much, so it's really not much of a problem. How's it climb up rough stuff going slower? That's a low usable speed. And if you keep it low so it can grip, even though it's got a really open diff, uh, that's, I didn't actually think it'd do that. I thought it'd just sit there spinning. I'm liking this. Let's see what it's like on the track. Now I know this isn't a track car, I know that. <laughs> and you get very little control. So I'm gonna decelerate just before I hit the bump. Not brake, but just come off the throttle. And that might help it uh, run a bit better. And we've got a stick, so we're stuck. Got to be careful to limit your, your uh, steering when you're at speed. Just keep it off that last 20% where it tucks the inside wheel in and you'll have a good time. I haven't bothered with the throttle limit, so I'm using 100%. And the throttle is pinned now. Except just before the jump where I let off. Oh, it's predictable. This is a wonderful car. Do you know how many kids are gonna have such a great time and grown-ups are gonna have a great time with this thing? Oh, it's great. I'm pinned again, just off, just before the jump and we get a good jump out of it. Look at that. <laughs> I'll have to work on my, uh, on my inputs. Oh, see how plush it is. This, this handles like a monster. Oh boy, this is super fun. The only issue I've had with it so far is that uh, I got kind of stuck when a stick or something was in the front there and I just, I couldn't drive out of it. <laughs> well, I'm quite a fan of this thing. I've just had a blast with it on the track. I know my son's gonna love it too. It's just, it's simple sturdy and when it flips it flips really nicely there's even a hard piece of plastic up the top there with well you could put flags or i don't know what their plan is there but there there's something in the top the motor has a uh, space for a fan as well and there's a plug on the esc so you can stick a fan there if heat is a problem it's just it's thoughtfully made out it does say it's waterproof so So there you go, waterproof as claimed. Nothing's fully waterproof and just like you shouldn't really submerge a, a car, doing this is really asking for trouble because there's a conformal coating that goes over the board that protects it, but it might have small gaps, which means if you do something like this or drive through a creek, which some kids are gonna do, will it survive? Well, it should, but waterproof and uh, you know, submarine two different things but huh, i mean it seems fine so that's that's good you know i just noticed something else about this there's a little hinge pin here and a piece of plastic that bends in so it'll actually take a hit but they've also got it in the rear this thing's just designed for trouble it's perfect i mean if you're after a, a basher that's going to be cheap and reliable probably cheap to fix as well i suspect i've never had a problem buying armor parts in australia I can only assume in America it's even better. Um, I've got to rate this car. It's really sweet. I'll stick a link down below where you can get this thing. If you're interested, I do recommend checking it out, especially is it kid proof? I certainly think so. I think the weakest part of this thing might just be the body. 
But having said that, I've crashed it and bashed it for a full battery pack, just one. And there's some scratch and wear, but barely anything. My Traxxas Slash after its first run was half destroyed. This... Oh no, it does have some damage. Actually, I was waiting to see. So the inside of the front body has been bent in like that. And yeah, that's not ideal because it's only can, uh, it's only attached in the middle there. So the it has actually taken a bit of damage and it's folded. I don't think this is polycarbonate. I didn't think it was. Still, time will tell how resilient it is, but I like it. If you like it too, sweet. Throw me a like. Thank you for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on RCTNT. Cheers.